to uh, acknowledge the organizers. Um, I was asked to be on the organizing committee. I said, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not local, but I'll get you a couple helpers. Um, Paul Tripp and Barbie Tripp. And we were led by Ms. Marcia Sutsman, who wrote this book. And um, Marcia did the 40th, oh. and she called and said, should we do a 50th? And I said, of course, we should plan a 50th to have a COVID. And I said, it's cheap to, to, to cancel a convention by you. So, so they really had to plan the whole thing, COVID relaxed a little bit, and here we are, thank God. Marcia, that's from your group. Hey. You're welcome. Yes. Wonderful. Always have. And also, uh, I need to acknowledge Mary Lagressi. Mary? Who, uh, Lisa. Lisa? Lisa Lagressi. Is she here? Yes. Did she stand? Yes. 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 She put together uh, some great press and got, got the press to uh, print it, put it in the papers, and, uh, oh, no. and really. <laughs> And repeat it on Facebook and come out of the <laughs> Well done, everyone. A couple of stupid awards. One for longest journey. I came from Kansas. Anybody want to be Kansas? Got mileage? <laughs> Congratulations for women, Buster. Thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Your name? Adam. What year? Uh, 9902. Jim Schmoes, uh, 72 to 78 or thereabouts. 76. And a fill in uh, part time instructor kept the core going. I'll give you the most number of marching members. Um, I'm not going to my family for me. Uh, Brother Paul. Um, my sister Barbie. My sister in law Sue. And my nephew Nick. And his sister, Chelsea. What do six? But there's another family I know that probably beats us, and that's the Foster Row family. Is there any, is anybody from the uh, Darrow Rose family show today? I don't think so. I couldn't get a hold of them. I don't, they knew about it. They traveled quite a bit. Is there any other families that want to nominate themselves for beating five or six? Okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> we don't have any awards. There's no money involved.
thanks everybody for coming out. It's great to see you know so many people and who have enjoyed you know have, uh, you know been been the core and the core has been part of your life uh, just like it's been part of mine. Uh, you know since I you know I I joined in '78. I didn't know what was going to happen at that point uh, or where it would take me. But uh, you know and as with everybody, when you when you show up for fight and drum, you don't know what you're in for. Uh, I, you all know what that's about. Uh, you know, and so it, you know, it, it's uh, it, it's been great. Just you know, for me personally, you know, to as a performer, it taught me, you know, got me the performance bug, and I'm you know, I still play uh, to this to this day. In fact, I'm playing tonight up in Arbor, so still playing, uh, and it it, uh, it it's just a great family thing too. So uh, after I started a family, I was very fortunate in that. Uh, my wife and kids were both uh, enjoy being a part of the core, uh, so I've I've seen the core from uh, from all sides really, from you know being a being a member, being a parent, being an instructor, uh, and it's just a great organization all around. So uh, I'm thrilled to have been a part of it, and uh, you know it's, it's just great to see everybody here because I can see that the core has been a, a really great influence on on everybody here. So uh, thanks thanks to you guys for. For all your work and in, in being the core, and I'm glad to have shared some of that with you. So thanks, everybody. Thirty years of leadership. Of course, there's some some interims. Um, people I had to look at history for. People I had to look up the, the history of. Uh, there isn't a written history probably in these books here. I found it on, uh, on an archive from the 35th anniversary, I think. And it brought some names of uh, Glenn Gorn from 1979 to 88 or 87 or so. Um, is Glenn here? Does anybody have any, any memories of Glenn, Glenn's leadership time? Uh, Alice was and Riley, which was a Who are you? Are they here? As an interim instructor during the time of leadership uh, lapses or, or a lack of full time director. Whitney Prince filled in as the second core director somewhere around 1977 to time. I'm a little confused about the box itself. The book says one year, um, people I've talked to here said he was there five or six years. No, he was there for yeah, four or five years. And then, of course, there was a founder, uh, Mark Pettit. Um, Mark and Carol Pettit, do you rise, please? Or are you? Where's your picture? Uh,
And we start practicing in November, right away. The winter, of, winter of 71. By April of 72, we were ready for our first performances. The first one was in what used to be called Variety Is, the band, the band show at high school. And Jim Griffin put the bike and drum car on. I'm uh, giving his heart because that wasn't an official school program at all. And uh, in the spring, uh, uh, a month later, so we, we marched through a sewer tube at the uh, art park. <laughs> and our first um, inglorious, there's pictures of the sewer tube, but it's beautiful. Uh, first inglorious uh, beginning. The music was good, the drums were good, the fives were good. There was about 27 fives Ooh. at the, wow. First, wow. the very first one. All made up of uh, high school uh, band, marching band members, except maybe one or two. And that was the core of it. Uh, and it, it started off with a band. And Linda Hikoki remembers uh, the best tune we, we uh, played that day was Make Me Smile by Chicago. <laughs> 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 well, that was when we marked in. I mean, we did traditional yeah, stuff, but, but he, he plugged in some modern stuff. Uh, it was fantastic. It's a big start. Yeah, anything you want to say about the beginning of it? I think it's good. There is one, you, you, you're good on all those details. There is one in between the um, playing at the variety of years, even before that. Um, it was a typical drum corps winter standstill. And I think we were in Flint to, to do that. Like City? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is in, uh, in the winter. Um, I, don't, I don't see any reference to it, but I, I remember we all had to drive up in our cars and play in front of the area drum course, which is nothing like it is today, so don't, you know, don't get confused with that. Everything was very local. Um, but we, I think we did make the smile there. I, I was really digging around trying to understand what kind of repertoire we would want to do. And, Clem is one example, um, and I'll put that right away, but Clem and then the, um, basically the only thing I knew about Pipe and Drum Corps was one recording that uh, one of my mentors uh, had given me. You can still get that recording. It was from the New York Regimental's Pipe and Drum Band on Long Island, and they, they used the word band. Um, but it had a number of um, very significant drummers and fifers from that era. Uh, so a lot of what I got was from what I learned from there. And I think about 70. Uh, only the archives run away, didn't you? And they try to start most of the tunes, because I'm like one today. We, we, uh, so the tunes were put in the business, but they were the fifer department's tradition, except you created the many drummers. Yeah, and we, it's, I think we're just zero actually it wasn't even zero. I don't know what you made it out of. Minio is what we handed out and we discovered real quick that those were terrible. So we only did that about twice. I remember getting all that crap in my hand. But copies at the Library of Congress of the number of interesting teams we made that. Um, How much obscure ones. I remember doing that. They weren't the way they were. Clean the erasers. I did happy. We did also go to Deep River. Oh, yeah. Maybe in 73, um, just ourselves. 74, we took the. I can't remember what we did. 74. We went to Deep River then, and then to the first ones. The second old guard. Uh, mm -hmm. There's pictures in there. 73, and then the train to the second old guard. That's how yeah, so we did the friendship with the old guard. And we stayed on, on the base, but you do that in war. <laughs> there, there's pictures of the, the drum lines together. Where did you go? The drum lines that? together, the chorus together. Those are some typical canoes. So the pictures where. Yeah, and, and one of them, one of the old guard, I think he's got his tongue out. My dad cut the old guard his tongue out. That's great. Um, but eventually I started to kind of get the hang of what uh, the fight and what we're doing. Sure. And, but we were still doing our own thing. We were marching. You remember the first contest that we did? Well, yeah. Like I, think, I think Tour. Some, somewhere I, I got the message that this guy in Lake City was going to run a contest. And he was kind of a promoter. Uh, and he actually got 
um, the deep inhale core from Connecticut, and it took a new core. It seems like it was just three. Just three. Um, and we performed like up on an open area in the park um, in Lake City. And um, we thought, oh, all these other scores are, uh, they have lots more history than we do. I, I was absolutely bored when they announced one of the winners. So. Uh, he, he told us Nathan Hill was coming when we just got down his own with God. Uh, and we'd seen Gretchen and Nathan Hill, you know? and they showed up the full boat for him, and they had the, they had the core, they had the muskets, they had the cannon, they had the civilians, and they went for about half a mile. But before we got to, we had to be practicing, we said, well, you ready for Nathan Hill's here. Mark says, they're just going to march around and... <laughs> And that's about what they did. I mean, they were terrible. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. they, they were terrible. They looked good. 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 They looked uh, we had uh, five sneers at that thing and one base. And our good friends were in line of 73. It's just, yeah. I had a great big black and white blown up picture like, like that. I don't think I remember that. Just it shows most of the people. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it, we were scared of that. Uh, I remember how scared I was. And, and uh, I do remember to this day, so the only performance that I was ever a part of when the snare line was perfect. There wasn't a buzz, a buzz anymore. Don't be so scared. I, I don't know how it happened. It never happened again. But when they announced the scores, oh, Gary Hilfing, some people in the base, the gym person who couldn't make the tour, Gary Hill was in class of 69 from the Clinton University of Michigan first chair. So we had the first chair of Michigan percussionist total line point bass for us. It was kind of embarrassing. It wasn't sorry, he fell down the horse and did a great job. Uh, he went on that tour and he played in that performance with us. And my dad had a picture of uh, Gary, Carol, and Mark uh, crouched down as they announced the, uh, uh, in the crowd as they announced the, uh, just before and just after they announced the club. Actually, it's a tip second place to the computer. Then we all went crazy. And the smiles were big, and people were jumping and grabbing me. And we won as an award that flag that you still carry, used to carry. What's the name for it? But the one's a pine tree. Uh, that was our award for winning our first competition. Mm -hmm. And of course, we didn't have a guard. We, we had a drum major. <laughs> so that was it. Um, so there was a kid in the who came along with us. Uh, my mom always dressed us in suitable, suitable uh, matching clothes. <laughs> Rob Creek, where are we? We're up in the. Rob and Ann, can you come up here for a minute? Come up here. Ann and Teresa. These, these were our uniforms. This is close, this close to close to the uniform. Rob and Ann joined the military that day, and these two joined the next year. But this, this was the first uniform that yeah, yeah. the stripes were. The material was a little different. But, um, this proof, the human parents were not on the material. All bolts of material was blue stripes for the drums, red for the pipes. And, um, uh, bought, bought the patterns. And the patterns went home with the parents and the, the mothers and the daughters and the, the girls and built all the shirts. And then we had to buy white pants, white pants. white jeans, white socks, and white tennis shoes. <laughs> and, and no parade the first year. Second year we had a parade, which always blew off because it was very lightweight. But that was the first year. All, all volunteer, all. There were no fees, there were no payouts. Mark and Carol did not take, take any salary that I ever heard of. Nope. Um, there were no assistants. She was the assistant. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, was, it was a great time. And we did that up for 72, 3, 4, 5. 76 by Centennial season came along. And that's what's it up.
to the current Rev War theme for the Bicentennial. Um, uniforms were just kind of looking, but they were all ran out of nylon bodies. Those are the original pants from the first uniform. They looked good and they were lightweight and they were cool. And they were very to wear. <laughs> and then a uh, um, I don't know how long those lasted, seven or eight years, and then the Corps bought authentic wool uniforms, and I don't know how the kids today can wear them, they didn't even like today. Uh, but they do it. And what can they more and more uh, uh, authentic? Um, the music, so I, I still recognize most of the tunes that they play and most of the strokes that are really, and they're all um, derived from parts of original transcriptions. Uh, this is a lot of expectations by the different directors in the years, but um, I listened to them at the park Thursday night and there's only one thing that I didn't recognize that, that was crazy. The drum solo was on the way. We didn't do drum solos back then. I don't know why. <laughs> Not staying alone drum solos. Park, park soon, but didn't finish. That's, that's director leadership. I'm going to cut this pretty short. But well, we have some um, management leadership technologies to make today. Um, over the years, uh, my father served as the first um, director, and then I'm going to help Mark get this thing going. Uh, I think he served just the first couple of years. First couple of years, and then, uh, and then there was a, a few Sweeney took over, I believe. And then over the years, again, these things I get out of the history. And we have a few of them in the house today. We've got a couple of them. And talk to them a little bit. And I've lost the names. But among them was uh, Chris Williams, president, 91, 92. He's been passed. Um, Marsha, I'm going to let, let you take this over. Because you've talked to people and you've uh, made some statements. From the past time, and I finally remember that I was a volunteer to come up with that. There was someone that said they wanted to speak about their father was present. My not sorry. In the meantime, this is from Sumamano. She said, my daughter Madeline decided to join PFTC in 2008, sixth grade. I had no idea what PFTC was, but the eight years that came after that decision was some that I will never forget. I think what sticks in my mind most was a sense of community, not just for Madeline, but for me as well. While the Corps was practicing and striving for excellence, the instructor and parent group were behind those kids offering support and organization to make that happen. The last performance of tour always brought tears to my eyes, all the practice and hard work. You could see the look of pride and accomplishment in everyone's face. I don't think we could have asked for anything more from an organization. Cheers to 50 more years. This is from Julie Markey, who's here. Um, her it says, when, oh, there she is. <laughs> when we first heard about the Corps back in 2009, my daughter and I had no idea what we were in for. The next six years were full of fun, music, travel, hard work, laughter, and great people. One of the things I always loved most about the Corps was how accepting and inclusive everyone was. No matter the person, it was always new to them in the group. As a group, we got to experience so many unique opportunities and create memories and friendships to last a lifetime. Being able to watch our kids grow up in such an enriching environment, I was able to see how much they came out of their shells, matured, and eventually became the ones helping the younger kids after them. The hard work that everyone, the kids, instructors, parents, put in allowed this core to stand strong for the last 50 years and continue to positively affect so many lives. When I look back at my time with the core, I can't help but smile when I think of all the kids being goofy and having fun together 
and also get emotional when I saw how seriously these kids took their performances. Seeing the emotions of the audiences, families, and core members at places like Shanksville, Pennsylvania, the 9-11 Memorial never fails to make me tear up. After 50 years of tradition, music, traveling, memories, and friends, I am honored to have been a part of such an amazing group and look forward to the next 50 years of the incomparable Plymouth Fife and Drum Corps. I was president in the late 90s. I was president from 95 to 97, I think. In total, our family was in for 11 years. I was equipment manager, then truck driver for three years, vice president for one year, president for three years, and then treasurer for two. Being president was an awesome responsibility, but so worth it, as the group is such a great group and fantastic organization for the whole family. The kids make lifelong friends and learn so much in this group. My tenure as president saw a whole gambit of happenings, some funny, some tragic. The worst time was when my predecessor as president, Chris Williams, died very suddenly. This was a time when the whole Fife and Drone Corps family came together and helped each other make it through this ordeal. The Corps played at the funeral home and was and also at the cemetery. I know the Williams family really appreciated this. There were a lot of great fun and fun times. One of the funniest, which is funny now, was when we were on tour and staying on a school gym floor. It had been a long day, and we had gotten everybody down for the night when the fire alarm went off. We all jumped up and went outside the building. The fire department showed up, and we found out that the person who approved our staying there had not told them we would be there. So they pulled up and see 100 people standing outside the school. The fire chief was not happy. But once they realized there was no fire and it was a faulty alarm, he did not want us to go back in the building. It took a lot of talking and dealing to let us back in. We had to agree to have at least four parents wait the whole night in order to go back in. <laughs> it was a very exhausting day the next day. I know everyone involved in the floor is very proud of its accomplishments. When we perform, you can see the amazement on the crowd's face and when they realize how good these kids are. The reception when they go to the East Coast to play is awesome. Fifing and drumming is so good out there, and they always are amazed at how good the core is. Wish I could be there, but I do want to wish the entire core, parents and kids, good luck in the future. You will never forget your time you were part of this organization. Thank you, Tom.
for 13 years um, and joined the Viking Drum, Drum Corps out there called the Potomac Ancients. I was actually marching alongside some old guard members. So, so I I had my stuff together and the Viking Drum Corps prepared me very well for that. So um, he remembers very fondly hearing old guard. Um, he remembers the great work that Whitney Prince did um, as he hired on as the director that, at that time. And his fondest memory is uh, going on tour to Deep River. And he said to me, he goes, you know what, and I don't know what finances were like back then, but he said, we had to do something because the kids just were working so hard. The parents just looked each, at each other and said, we've got to make something happen. And, and Deep River is a big something happened, so that was really great. But his best memory was driving the old milk truck. No. <laughs> that was not what the vehicle looked like. <laughs> this thing was on its last legs, and my dad said he just remembers sitting in there with my 12-year-old brother sitting in a folding chair. <laughs> and then it's like the driver's seat was yeah there was something because there I sat and no seat belts no nothing but remembering going at a whopping 35 miles an hour <laughs> up some of those hills and my dad is a contingency plan man as a high school administrator at that time and his he was thinking the whole time what am I going to do if this thing doesn't work we got to rent something we got to unload uh, we got to load back up so that is his memory, um, sharing that with my brother. And so um, that's it. That's what he had to share. Um, and I just would like to say, on behalf of all of us, probably good on us. Yep. Good on us, marchers, fighters, drummers, guards, directors, staff, parents. Um, good on us. It's been 50. That's right. That's all right.
and open the jam. The board's going to stay here. Everybody brought their pipes. Go out in the field. And I'm just going to have a jam out there like we did in the old days. Or we do it every muster. And don't forget, if you pay for a t-shirt, pick it up at that table on the way out. Pick up the t-shirt on the way out. So without further ado, this is the 40th anniversary march.
foot. Oh, move. One, two, ready, foot.